kid. I don't give a shit what I say, I'll say what I like. I'm in my own, and I'd say it anywhere, I don't care who. Right, Mrs. Ross, why do you think it is that, you know, that Protestants and Catholics just can't live together in Belfast? There's nothing to keep Protestants and Catholics from living together, for they've lived together for years. But there'll never be any friendship between Protestant and Catholics again. There's a bitterness, but I know rightly that it's Paisley, and he's proud, and I don't care who's in it, whether they're my friends or not. Anybody connected with Paisley has a hand in this here, and anything else has happened in Belfast, and the UVF. And from now on, we're going to make and get up down the men and women and children, and we're going to train them up the way the Russians has them trained, that they must do their duty, because it's the only way we can live here. Here's a, an excellent opportunity for the Protestant people, the decent Protestant people, to come out and ha help the Catholics. The onus is on them now. To come in, shift furniture, to help in any way possible. And that, in that way, the people can conquer this uh, extreme element and, and live together. Groups of three, uh, one group to each side of the main street of Lord Street, and then the other groups go along each of the side streets, meeting the groups of people who are standing about and just more or less telling them that everything is under control and nothing to be afraid of, and nothing to be afraid of. Okay, right, groups of three. Right, could you break yourselves up in the groups of three? I say what I say, I'll say what I like. I'm in my own, and I'd say it anywhere, I don't care who. Mrs. Ross, why do you think it is that, you know, that Protestants and Catholics just can't live together in Belfast? There's nothing to keep Protestants and Catholics from living together, for they've lived together for years. But there'll never be any friendship between Protestant and Catholics again. There's a bitterness, and myself, I'm only speaking for myself, I never had no grudge against nobody, but now I have a bitterness in me. A real bad bitterness, a revenge that I know these people that born these houses must have had and has all the time while I have it now. Do, do, do you have many friends or, or relatives who are Protestants? Well, I have my father was a Protestant and he come from the Shankill Road and he was a decent man, but his people weren't so decent because they never let my mother and father have a minute's peace. And that's, that's 40, I'm 67 now. And uh, I, don't, I never know, don't know my Protestant friends. But I have Protestant friends from here. I can meet anybody going to the Shankill or anybody around the back. They're all good neighbours. I couldn't say nothing about them. But I know rightly that it's Paisley. And he's proud, and I don't care who's in it, whether they're my friends or not. Anybody connected with Paisley has a hand in this here. And anything else has happened in Belfast. And the UVF. And from now on, we're going to make and get up down the men and women and children, and we're going to train them up the way the Russians have them trained, that they must do their duty, because it's the only way we can live here. Do you think this bitterness really is going to help them? Yes, it'll help me, 
because these people has got revenge. Why should I not get revenge on the rest of the people that's about here? But do you not think that Protestants and Catholics, even in a, a district like this, can ever live together? Well, now, that's a big question. Could they never live together? How are we going? I'm 43 years here. I have had a good life, but you, you'd always that wee fear. You'd always that fear. Everybody had. And they're the bravest people and the friendliest people that ever lived round about here. But I mean, I, and they blame the IRA. There's no IRA that I know of about. But I wish I had been an IRA woman. I would have been here on the spot and had a machine gun. You seem to be telling me something that's very depressing. In other words, that that really in this area, at any rate, there's no future for Protestants and Catholics together. Is that is that right? The Protestants and Catholics could live together, but they have too many army may, army. They have too many armies. Both UVF, the Paisleyites. Everybody knows that the government. Everybody is everybody, but we have nothing. We're not supposed. If we had anybody here in this street was an IRA man, they'd be in and. Five minutes from now, if you go and report that, and they'll have them arrested. They have the half of the people around about arrested, and they don't know who they are, but they're supposed to be IRA men. And the problem is, I'll go Ignore all this, just concentrate and forget about it. Do you think, really, the Protestants and Catholics can ever live together in the city of Belfast? Well, there are some Protestants and Catholics who are fanatical, but they seem to be the older generation who have been through all this bitterness before and they can't forget. But I think younger people are better educated and they have more intelligence now. And I think they could. I know we could anyway. And we do. But uh, it's very hard for old people to forget. And maybe that's why everyone's so better. What do you think people can do? I mean, what positive things can people do, both Protestants and Catholics, do you think, to, to, to achieve this? Well, they can, instead of having, um, falling out with each other in their various works, they can just, well, maybe just pretend it didn't happen. And they, I know that seems a sort of a stupid way out, but just treat each other as if it didn't happen and and go on because if there's if everybody's revengeful it'll just keep on and on and on and all the small kids that have seen this happening now they'll remember and it'll just keep on and on until until this place is just a battleground until it's uh, like another Biafra Do you feel the same way? I do, yes. Yes. I think uh I think possibly the, both our Roman Catholic and Protestant church leaders could do a lot more. You know, I think they could educate the ordinary people a lot more. You know, uh, for, for instance, I think possibly, you know, they could tell their congregations a lot more about the other religion, exactly what it's about, and not have this fear. I mean, the whole, the basic thing is fear. People are really afraid of each other, and they don't know what it is they're afraid of. You know, it's so silly. Are you afraid? I mean, do you feel this? I don't, I don't, but I think people of a, you know, people of a certain intelligence really do fear this, you know, because they don't know enough about their neighbours, they don't know enough about the people they live with and work with. I mean, I think it's ridiculous that two men can work together and be happy at work and then go home at night and, you know, hate each other when they get outside their work doors. You know, it's ridiculous. And Sometimes when it comes to individuals, there isn't the hate. But when it comes to the mob, it's, it's the mob that, I don't know, this, this, this terrible terror that goes through them all and makes them all do this, this madness. Do you, do you think that enough, say, Protestants and Catholics both realise they're talking to the same God? No. I, I think sometimes that some of the, if the people had a bit more belief that there was a God, I mean, when it comes to the point, they all go to the same maker. Yes, I, I, mean, I think the main point, I mean, Belfast here, we all fight about religion, but I would say 75% of so-called Christians never go near church, you know? I mean, they don't know enough about religion to fight about it. It all boils down to being charitable to each other, like brotherly love. I know that sounds maybe corny to a lot of people, but like that's all it is. Why, why should you hate people? 
I mean, why can't you live together? Why can't it be like England, where people don't really care what what your religion is or what your beliefs? They all just work together. After all, you 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 have children and you want to look after them. You want to keep a home. Why destroy it all and live in this terrible atmosphere? And it is fear that causes it all, and I know that both sides are afraid. Protestants imagine that the Catholics are going to take them over. And Catholics, well, as you can see here, maybe it isn't imagination, know that the Protestants are trying to get rid of them. It, it's like the time of Cromwell or, or the, the Huguenots in France. It's you see, the, th the thing is, it, the ordinary Protestant from the areas that uh, were involved in this fighting. They really, they're bred with hatred for Catholics, and I think the majority of Catholics hate been hated. I, I don't think they're, they have no hatred in them themselves for anyone. But uh, Rock, no, that isn't quite right. I mean, uh, you get the lunatic fringe everywhere. You you, you yeah. get the fanatical Republican and all the rest. Yeah, you do. But, but I mean, it, it has to go out. It, it, people have to go out and tell these people just exactly what they're. You know, explain uh, these fears. You know, ju just explain things to them that they shouldn't be afraid. You know. I mean, as you say, there's only one God. You know, and there are a lot of ways of getting to Him. Why not so. go to Him peacefully in your bed instead of in a carnage like this? Oh. Oh. Mr. McMuckin, is this your home here? This is my home here. What, what, what's happened to it? Well, you see, as you see, it's burned in the roof of it, and everything's burned upstairs and racked downstairs and burned as well, and scorched everything. You know, you know like it, you couldn't live with it. I mean, you see, there's no use of talking about you couldn't live when there's no roof or anything, don't you know? That's it. Do, do you feel bitter about this? No, I'm not bitter about it, because bitterness would do no good, so it wouldn't. I consider that uh, the mob that done this are an unthinking mob, and they're a mob that have been uh, misled, don't you know? They, they, as I've said before, the Protestant people around Cooper Street and uh, these adjoining seats, none of them had hand act their part in this, because like I know the most of them, there's a lot of young fellas between 17, 18, up to 24, five years of age, there was no, there was no responsible Protestant like actually taking part in the doing of this. Because I was here till five houses were on fire and I thought it was time to leave then, don't you know? But I certainly have no bitterness because bitterness would do no good, don't you know? How do you think Protestants and Catholics in this city and this area can live together? The bulk of the Protestants and Catholics in this city have no grievance with other. It's a few that's been led by extremists are responsible for this. The bulk of the Protestants are decent people. I have worked with them a lifetime. Very decent Protestants, never mad butter. Just as good and as decent as the Catholic people. But it's the extremists that, leaders that uh, egg this on, don't you know? They're more responsible. And uh, the, the, the Protestant church, I would say, doesn't stand for this carry on. It's only a mob that stands for this, don't you know? And yet, of course, many people understand to be around here are bitter. What, well, you, what, what do you say to them? Well, you see, I suppose the bitterness is uh, through their homes been burned and their clothes and their furniture and so forth like this. But uh, out of bitterness, you'll not build a better country, don't you know? Like, uh, it'll have to be uh, all I'll have to build them and try and build a better, as you hear them talking about a better world, a better Belfast or a better world. People will have to come. You can't keep that up forever. You get nowhere, don't you know? Well, do you think that Protestants and Catholics in this city can do it? They can. Like the the decent Protestant and the decent Catholic could pull together. But you see, I said uh, different times the the, the 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 mob that's misled come in to crack up any of that good community that Catholics and Protestants would try to form. Do you see? But I believe like. Uh, that it should be got over, don't you know, with an effort. But at the present time, I think the only one can bring about peace here now is the British government.
happen, you know. They have more control of the situation. Leaving it to the the parties that were fighting here, that this thing would go on indefinitely, don't you know? That wouldn't be a good thing. So it wouldn't. For either side. Well, that's my opinion. So it is. How do you think Protestants and Catholics in this city can ever live together in peace? Well, so far as I'm concerned, they'll have to know each other better. They'll have to examine each other as individuals, get to know what they believe, get to know what makes them tick. And that is the only way, not by thinking that they believe something radically different from them, but to find out what they have in common. And I'm sure and certain that we all have quite a lot of in common. The same as we have quite, quite a lot of uh, things that we hate in common as well. And this is one of the things which I think we should really hit to the, the very bottom of our heart is the strife and enmity in, in our midst at the present moment. How, how do you think people who've gone through this, through houses knocked down, we're sitting at the moment uh, and the remains of a house, I mean, how, how do people who've undergone this learn to live with another person or can they live with other people? Well, the main problem, so far as Christianity is concerned, and in my interpretation is this, that to be a Christian, to be a real Christian, you've got to be able to sit down even in poverty and in very adverse circumstances and thank God that you're able to even look around, even at the devastation itself, and to start life over again. That itself is a privilege. And we must look, up, look upon it that way, not with any recrimination in our heart, but rather thankfulness to God that we can raise up and um, even uh, surpass ourselves. Do you think that this is possible, and given the circumstances that exist in Belfast at the moment? Giving a particular lead on the part of all churches, I believe, is quite possible for Christianity to rear its head again in the truest sense of the term. What kind of a lead? They must counsel their people, as uh, quite a lot of them have done. I think it's uh, one of the, I think it was just, uh, Dr. Eric Gov uh, Gardner and the Cardinal have already said that vengeance is at mine, thus saith the Lord, I will repay and not take it upon themselves to do that sort of thing. And to get to, and to, get to love each other again, to really get to know and to love each other, that is the main problem in life today. Do you have any hope that in, in Belfast at the moment that the community can learn to, to, to grow up? Yes, they must. They must look at other, other situations that have taken place in the past, learn a lesson from that. We've had this place, this is the third time in my memory, 1920, 1930, what was it, 35, I think, and now 1939. And with past experience, we should take that as a lesson and a guide and amend our lives accordingly. I told you I need one, I haven't had a bath all week. Do you not feel that people can live together? You couldn't live with them people, not if you ride them. <laughs> not you those couldn't. people have done that, but uh, the average Protestant didn't do this. It's the Paisley, Paisleyite element done this. Do you think that the Protestants and Catholics can live together? They can, but... Uh, It'll be very difficult under the Unionist government because uh, their whole policy, like, uh, when you go for a job, Catholics discriminate against when he goes for work. And the personnel staff and all these big firms, these extreme, ex extreme, extreme Unionists are on the personnel staff. And they asked all leading questions to find out your religion, and they're not come out there directly, but uh, what school you go to, what... What what football team you play for, or what uh, swimming club you, you play for. See, that's... And should, should this settle down, those people are still in power. I can only see uh, peace here, and the Protestants and Catholics can live together under a Westminster government. 
They'll have to take it, take it over. But they're under unionist government. You see, uh, when uh, Major Chester Clark made that speech on the 12th of July, it was a bigot speech. This extreme, extreme Protestants, the Paisleyites, knew they could go ahead with this. See, the moderate Prime Minister, they'd get rid of him. Uh, what, what, what about it? Terence O'Neill. Now, I, I want to put another aspect of it. Here's a, an excellent opportunity for the Protestant people, the decent Protestant people, to come out and ha help the Catholics. The onus is on them now. To come in, shift furniture, to help in any way possible. And that, in that way, w the people can conquer this uh, extreme element and, and live together. But there's, I've seen very few of them, though there is plenty of them, Morgan, but n n not enough. It's, the moderate Protestant uh, at the moment is just sitting still, though he disapproves of this, but he, he's taken no active action in it. Do you, th do, you uh, think, do you think that, you know, that Protestants and Catholics can live together, and if so, how? Well, the only reason I think I could, the only thing I could see they could do would be live one every other house and bring them up together instead of putting them on this side of the street and on the other side of the street. Would you mind that? No, I wouldn't mind that at all. Schools, would you? Yes, keep them to bring them up together from no height. Uh, Integrated education, then, would you say? I think it would be the best plan for mm, them all. It'll have to come about. It's the only yeah. way that they uh, get to know each other. See, they've been in the Greek, too many ghettos, Catholics and Protestants. That system would have to be broke up. After all this has happened, I mean, do you feel bitterness or do you feel that you, you can still get along with people if, if they're prepared to get along with you? What about you? I don't know. <laughs> Alan, what do you want? Come on. <laughs> Say then. Do you think people can get along? Not after that. Not for a while. In 20 years, you might get somebody coming up. But well, listen, not you're, just you're, now. You're, 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 you're going to get married eventually, probably, and bring up a family. <laughs> I mean, do, do you want eggs? <laughs> do, 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 do you want your family to grow up with this kind of carnage around them? No. no I wouldn't like it at all, but there's nothing you can do about it, you know? Do you not think there's anything you can do? Nothing you can do about it. Then make it, make it up to them, but you couldn't. You wouldn't let you. I mean, surely there are many Protestants and Catholics on both sides who despise and abhor what's mm, happened. You do get them. They get, they're not all bad, but 90% of them are. 90%? I would say 90% of them, yes. Well, I'll have to go 90% of what did he say? No, we were just talking. At exactly a quarter past six, would you? At quarter past six, right. And I'll be there to meet you to get your stuff out, okay? That's dead on. Now, That's dead dead on. on a quarter past I'll six. Be a, a, I'll be there. I'm uh, going up now to bring small stuff down, see, like a dolphin thing. See, have, see, you, have you got a couple of helpers? I have a couple of helpers, yes. You don't mind? No, no, Good I've enough. got four men. Good man. Well, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be at, the, at the Dominican Common now at, at a quarter, quarter past, past six, will you? Six. And then make out a point, okay? Okay, that's... I know. Angus, anyway, um, do you honestly think that Protestants and Catholics in the city of Belfast can live together? I, I think they can. How? Well, I think it was just as bad in 1920. And I think that people were learned to live again. And I think we still can learn to live here. Because everybody in Belfast is just basically the same. We're all the same people. How, how do you think they can? I mean, terrible tragedy has happened in the last week. Um, a lot of people are very bitter. How do you think that kind of bitterness can be overcome and people can get away from the, the kind of hate and mm. anger that they feel? Well, I think the ordinary people, the, the people who live all around the district here in Shankill Road and Falls Road, they can all say out straight what they believe. If they believe we should have all this rioting to ruin the country that they live in, or whether they want to, to live here um, yes. Whether they want to, to live here in peace with their neighbours, whether they want so and so next door to come in and out their house if she's a Roman Catholic, I think we should be able to do this. 
from, from the other people you know, from your friends, from your relatives, do you think it's possible? Well, I think all my friends, they're all for living with anybody, no matter what they are, should you be a Hindu. I think that the, the people generally feel this, especially the ones that I know, the ones I live with, and the ones I talk to every day in work. The people in work, we're all mixed. There's Roman Catholics and Protestants. And this week there has been an awful tension with people who otherwise would have been great friends. We're all laughing, as I say. We're all laughing and joking. But still there's that tension there. Have you been talking about it among one another? We have been talking about it. And the Roman Catholics have said to me how awful it was, all this, that all they wanted to do was to live in peace and to be left alone in their own homes. And what, 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 have, what have Protestants been saying? And the Protestants have been saying the same. But, but with the two people that I can think of, they're just afraid of each other. One's afraid that the other one isn't telling the truth. That they're saying, oh, I want to live in my own home, but they're not really telling the truth. And this is the fear that everybody has on the falls in Shankill that I think. The people on the Shankill think that the falls road are coming up to burn all their homes. And the people on the falls think the very same thing. Because I have been talking to some people on the, off the falls who work in the place where I work. And they have been saying the same thing. I was talking to a girl last week and she said that we heard that the people of the Shankle were all coming up to Ballamurphy to burn us out. And I said, isn't that funny? We were up all night because we heard the people of the, the falls were all coming up our way to burn us out. And we were all up all night fearing this. How do you think people can get away from, you know, from rumour and from panic and hysteria, the kind of rumour and panic you've been talking about? Well, I'm not too sure how they can get a, about it as a group, but I know if everybody does it in their own house, I think if all the rumours stop and if there's somebody said something about a Roman Catholic and somebody says something about a president, if somebody would just say to them, is it near about time we we'll have stopped all this? Because after all, it's Christianity we're worried about. And this ecumenical movement, it was to start, it was to be a great thing. But the ordinary people didn't want it because we're so concerned about being Protestants and Roman Catholics. We're not concerned about calling ourselves Christian. This is what I think. I think if people were prepared to forget all about being Protestants and say, I believe in, in Jesus Christ. I want to love people around me. And if a Roman Catholic was prepared to say this, I, I am not a Roman Catholic, I'm a Christian. I want to love people around me. I want to work for my family. I want to work for the land I'm living in. I think this here would lay everybody's fears. I think it's just these labels we've got. And after all, when we all die, we'll not have no label at all. Oh, I've not okay. saw them. What? I have saw the Glen. <laughs> I, I used to be a member of the Oval. Not of the rest of them. Harry, how, how do you think Protestants and Catholics in this area in Belfast can ever get down to it and live together? Well, the Catholics and Protestants will have to realise it, will have to get together. What the conditions now are cannot go on. We can't live like this all the time. We've got to work. What kind of things do you think they can do? Well, they'll have to quit recrimin discriminating uh, who's the cause of it all and uh, uh, who's going to get called to justice. And uh, also, uh, who's to blame? Uh, there's a depredation has been done, uh, uh, and I think there's a big lot of people of all denominations have suffered. And uh, I think, well, how this time is coming, we'll have to do something for the get back onto the level again where people can go to work and people can earn their living. There's people bound to be suffering hardships now through this, and people having to do things which they haven't done. Any, shouldn't have any reason to, to have to do. Uh, their source of income has been cut off. Uh, just their way of life has been altered entirely. And I think it's time that uh, people have got to get together in some way or other. Or, uh, been, both sides more or less will have to capitulate to a certain extent and uh, get back to normal again because we must go ahead and live. We must go on. There's a lot of people, of course, around, say, this area, even after what's happened this last week, who feel angry, who feel almost panic-stricken, hysterical. And 
how, how do you tell these people that uh, they've got to live together with Catholics? Uh, I couldn't agree with you about the panic sticking. Uh, I think the proper word for it would be people on the whole are afraid. You're afraid of me and I'm afraid of you. We're distrusting one another. And there's so many uh, rumours going about which uh, is telling me that uh, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. I'm on my guard all the time. I'm, uh, I'm prepared to swing around. There's somebody at my back all the time. Uh, this is the, attitude, the general attitude of people. They're afraid just. Uh, they just don't know what they, what they uh, how to think level. And I said, I have to get somebody assurance from somebody that things are not the way they are. And the only one way they're going to get it now is by coming together themselves and saying, well, we're not going to listen to these yarns. There's too many uh, uh, inflammatory statements are being made uh, on both sides and uh, blaming one another for who's to blame. Uh, we didn't do nothing. Everybody's innocent. There was somebody guilty, but we'll have to forget who the guilty one was in the meantime and get down to and uh, then investigate how it did, really did start and see that it doesn't happen again. Speaking absolutely personally here, do you find any difficulty in getting along with Roman Catholics? Oh, I never did. Never did. I don't, I don't hate my fellow man. I have no hatred for anybody. Probably I wouldn't, I never would annoy anyone unless uh, they come along to smash my windows or do something in my own house or my own home harm. But as far as going out looking for trouble or, or hitting any one particular, particular person or sect of people, I never did my life and I never will. Do you think many people in Belfast feel the same way? Uh, certainly, I uh, most certainly do. There's plenty of sensible people who just can't understand it and have been knocked out of their way of going and are greatly troubled would like to see peace restored here. Do you have any examples in the past, we were talking about getting along with, with Catholics, any examples in the past of the way you've been able to get along together? Well, uh, I have come, but come walking up and down the Cashmere Road this last 26 years, and uh, I would say, without fear of contradiction, I think that the people in the Cashmere Road know me, and there's a big lot of people I don't even know their names that I stand and talk to. And I've always found them, the Roman Catholics in work all decent, they all know know me and I, I never give cause on them any trouble and the people on the Cashmere Road even when I'm going to work now I get annoyed in the morning going to work going up Cooper Street to work and there's no I know several people in, in different states on the Cashmere Road personally and I talk to them and I can't see they, uh, well, there's anything wrong with you there are any difference, more different than what Protestant people are they just seem the same to me, they're people They've got to live the same as we've got to live. And I think the best way to do it is to live together, irrespective of what way they worship. I mean, if they worship in the chapel, I watch them worship in the church. Well, that's, I mean, they're entitled to that. And uh, there's too many, there's too much interference just, uh, too many uh, statements going out that are getting the people to such an extent that they're, they're distrustful of everybody. Everybody's got their enemy particularly people of a different persuasion, and they're, waiting, they're always waiting every minute on someone else coming and uh, doing something, burning their house, patting their bombs through the window, and so far, anything at all that's going to do them harm. And they actually, I think people get, getting to believe that, but they're getting fed up and run about at night watching for what. Groups of three. Uh, one group to each side of the main street of Lord Street. And then the other groups go along each of the side streets, meeting the groups of people who are standing about and just more or less telling them that everything is under control and nothing to be afraid of. Okay? Right, groups of three. Right, could you break yourselves up into groups of three? No, groups of three. Uh, 
one side of Lord Street, the other side, and the, the small streets off side of Lord Street. Can you come with me? Now this street here, this street here, look. Constant city. Well, I know these lots. What do you do when you're out in patrol? <coughs> well, the main task is really to meet people and talk to them and put them at ease. Uh, I usually concentrate on the younger element because I'm the youth leader in the area and know most of the young people and therefore I'm greatly concerned about you know the behaviour of the young people so what, in what the do you, area. What do you tell them when you when you're meeting? Well I, I think it depends on the age of the young people but the younger ones I tell them to get off the streets early at night to try and implement a sort of family curfew and for the older ones I tell them more or less to act responsible and in general it has been quite satisfactory. I was just going to ask what kind of reaction do you get both from? I would say it's been very responsible. Last night, for instance, for the first time since I've ever been here, I saw Lost Lord Street deserted uh, when I came down, which is a very, very unusual thing to see. And I do think it, it uh, really was the outcome of our door-to-door -door visitations the night previous, asking the parents to uh, implement a family curfew. Do you meet many frightened people? Older people, yes, yes, yes. A little bit uncertain as to what it's all about, really. What do you tell them? Well, we tell them that we are an organisation which can help. And if there's any difficulties at all, they can contact us. And uh, most of them know me, anyhow. And uh, I do feel that uh, they, they would, if necessary, come to me and, and I could put them onto the, the headquarters and uh, something could be done to put them at ease. Do, do, um, do only Protestants patrol Protestant streets and Catholics patrol no, Catholic no, streets? No, 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 it's a mixed. It's a mixed. Uh, I couldn't actually tell you even the regions of the people here on my patrol. I never ask, and I'm quite sure that uh, you know there's many patrols formed with Protestants and Catholics alike. <coughs> That's one of the great things about it. Do you think, you know, from your experience of this area, or what do you think from your experience of this area, in the aftermath of this this whole tragedy, what do you think the possibilities are that Protestants and Catholics can actually get down to the the whole task of living together? I think there is a ray of hope. What there, kind of ray? What makes you think that? I think, especially with the young people, I think we must concentrate on the efforts of trying to bring younger people together uh, so that there is absolutely no question of religious uh, intimidation at all. But you said there was a ray of hope. I mean, what, what, what give you grounds for that? I feel, I feel in many ways that uh, the issues that the young people raise are not as deep-rooted as the older issues. And the older people. Do you not think that uh, an event like the past week could make them as deep rooted? Well, I, I don't know. I couldn't answer that, but I hope not. I hope not. This is my second night. Third night, sorry. Okay. I'll just ask you that again. How many nights have you been going out now? This is the third night. Monday, last night, and tonight. Well, what, what kind of response have you got? Uh, very good indeed. There's, uh, we didn't meet with any uh, rough crowds so far, and uh, the pe people received us very uh, warmly, and uh, I think they realised that we were trying to bring about a, a peace and an understanding between peoples of uh, religion. religion. What, what would you do if you, uh, if, if you didn't meet with any, any trouble? Uh, well, there's usually about six or seven of us together, but even with that, it would be rather hopeless if we met up with a gang of real thugs, but uh, we get in touch, uh, we go to the nearest <coughs> phone, get to, to in touch with the hall which is at uh, Westburn uh, uh, Church, Westburn Presbyterian Church Hall, and we get in touch with the police uh, in uh, the nearest way we can. Have you ever done this kind of patrolling before? Uh, I don't know that I did, not in this, not in this line, no. no why I was really asking that is, um, I mean, well, what do you feel yourself without having experience of this kind, going out at night into the early hours of the morning and patrolling dark streets? Well, yes, uh, there is a, 
there is an element of tension and uh, shall I say a little fear but then the way I look at it I'm speaking personally that I consider it my duty as a citizen of Belfast or uh, Northern Ireland to, to do this to try to uh, 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 bring to the people uh, something of how we should live together in peace and harmony and I think uh, I'm doing a good work and I'm uh, proud to do it that's the way I look at it uh, have you ever been afraid? Uh, in, in this campaign, I can say honestly that I haven't, I haven't been afraid of it.